and everybody else. Recording. What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfus with the Untrapped Podcast, my friend. We have Jeremy Tallboy from Atlanta, Georgia, and North Georgia Landscape Management. Yeah, North Georgia Landscape Management. I was looking at your shirt. It's very nice. NGLM, if you're watching this on the video and if you're listening on the Untrapped Podcast, what's up? So this guy is landscape business up north north of $20 million uh, annually. He's built an entire media team. I've got to meet him a couple times when I flew out to Atlanta to a couple uh, events. Craziest thing, when he first started his landscape business, he said he was watching my videos and <clears> – <throat> Seems to get over a cold here. And now I hear all these people talking, man, you got to meet Jeremy Tallboy, Jeremy Tallboy. I'm like, Tallboy, is that a is that a real last name or is that like a stage name? That sounds so cool. And I meet him in a person and he's so humble and so calm. And now he says things like, well, you're going to listen to him talk because I'm going to do less talking because I'm interviewing him. But the main takeaway is, is, is literally asking, because most people in my audience, we got Chuck in a Truck, Possibility Pete, and Abundant Anthony. We got people either just getting started or, you know, we got people with half a million dollar businesses. But when we talk about 20 million, the first thing that comes to mind is like, how are you doing this, bro? And you're so calm. And uh, that's fascinating. So what's up, Jeremy? Not much, man. How you doing tonight? Bro, I'm so grateful and I'm just filled with inspiration. How about you? I'm blessed, man. Super blessed. Every day is a blessing for us. So, See, do you hear that in his voice? That's how he talks. Every day is just a blessing, man. I just can't believe I get to be a part of this. It's true, man. It, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, life is not not meant to be a punishment, man. This is a gift. So take every day as a gift and, and count your blessings. So. Mm. All right. Tell us your story, bro. Yeah, so, you know, I started my company back in 2010, very end of 2010, right out of college. Um, I actually went to school to be a history teacher, and I was going to be a baseball coach. I played baseball in college, where I kind of get my competitive spirit from, right? Uh, so I, I kind of got bit by the entrepreneurial bug my last year of school, and I thought, you know, I'm going to take a shot at, at – uh, you know, trying to build something and, and make money in my life. And honestly, I thought that I didn't really have much real world experience. I worked in a couple of uh, kitchens and restaurants and I didn't want to start a restaurant. So I decided I would, I would start a landscape company because I figured honestly, it was probably the easiest thing to learn the fastest. Uh, we were kind of uh, towards the end of a recession. If everybody remembers a lot of people were getting out of the construction industry and getting some trailers and and some mowers and going and cutting grass. And I became one of those people. Uh, I was watching shows like Shark Tank and Bar Rescue. And there was a show in particular called The Prophet uh, with Marcus Limonis, where he would go and, and kind of rehab failing businesses and uh, kind of invest in them and find where they were hurting and struggling and, and reposition position them in the industry by systems and processes and people and you know price product promotion all those sort of key elements to success and so i learned a lot from that and so when i when i graduated from college i i went and i got a mower my dad helped me out and we got a mower and i just started going door to door um cutting grass and the rest is kind of history you know i i was very fortunate to meet a lot of people i had a lot of good help on the way i had some mentors um I got into installation about 2014 or so, and that's when when I was really starting to watch you and uh, Jonathan Potoshnik on YouTube, trying to get into the commercial space a little bit, trying to get into the big money stuff, and not so much the the homeowner, um, you know, the 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 residential mowing and maintenance, trying to build some walls, trying to put in some some irrigation and sod and then go after some commercial clients. So I get on YouTube and I start Googling, you know, how to, how to price commercial uh, landscape bids. And then Jonathan Potoshnik popped up and I start watching his videos and he kind of walks you through things. And, you know, it, next thing you know, I'm, I'm looking at your videos because I'm suggesting, suggested for you, Keith Kalfas. <laughs> and uh, I was really drawn to you because 
you're very, um, you can tell that, that there is something inside of you speaking through you. You're very passionate about things. And one of the, one of the videos that I, I watched very early on was one that I think you were up at like three o'clock in the morning and you're talking to the camera and you're saying something to the effect like, if you, if you are overcome with a feeling at three o'clock in the morning, that is, is the, the world and the universe trying to tell you something. And that one touched me because uh, I, I felt that way. So uh, anyway, long story short, I started doing a bunch of, of install work. Uh, we now build pools, uh, commercial pools, residential pools. We do a lot of commercial work. So this past year, I did $8.3 million. Uh, the year before that, we were at like seven and then like six and five before that. But we just did a huge commercial install at the end of 2023, which led us to um, a, a very large commercial project. And that, that ticket is going to be about $6 million for one job. Uh, we actually start on Monday. Uh, it's a big commercial, a bunch of retaining walls cast in place, uh, modular block for an apartment complex that's going in. So, so that one ticket right there is almost as much as we did all of last year. So um, I just to kind of preface everything, we, we haven't done 20 million yet, but we're on pace for 20 million with all this stuff coming in. Um, but again, back back to that. It, it's all because of my team. And, and you met you got to meet a lot of my teammates in Atlanta and they, they went and they talked to Naylor and they talked to Paul and they were, they were fortunate enough to give their their story on their podcast. You know, I can't do anything without these guys. I'm kind of just the, the general manager. I'm the coach, if you will. Again, I played baseball. I'm super competitive. And what I'm what 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 I'm really good at is finding the people that can do uh, special things and bringing them on board and allowing them to do their job. And it's it's their talent, and their ability and their passion for their work that really elevates us as a team. So, you know, hats off to them, you know, uh, I couldn't do any of this without them. So, you know, you said I was humble at the beginning and, and it's true because I know, I know what I'm blessed with and uh, there's only so much that I do. It's my team that, that really shines. So that's kind of the story in a nutshell, I guess. I think you're muted. <laughs> I'm over here hitting buttons. Yeah, it was almost good. I was talking because uh, I'm getting over a cold. So if I clear my throat, I just wanted to keep it muted. Right. But but that long pause, people are like, what's what's he going to say? What's he going to yeah. say? But it was just muted. So when, when I hear you speak, the feeling that comes through me is, wow, this is possible because it's happening for you. And I want everybody to listen, who's listening right now to just get really calm, get your, like the stinking thinking out of the way or that, that anxiety motor that's running and say, Hey, when you get your ducks in a row and you, you build something and you, your intentions are moving forward and you're open to possibility and you allow yourself to think bigger and just open the receiving muscle. Like it's weak, open up and allow yourself to receive like, what can you take on? What can you put together? Like you said, you you build a team. Right. And your team does it. You're a facilitator. Right. You're you're now you're not out there. How can you possibly go and sell every job and do all the office work and answer the phones and collect the money and do the paperwork and then go install the job and pick up the materials and go to the dump? Are you doing all of that? Absolutely not. But there was a time that I did. I mean. Just, I mean, five, six, seven years ago, I had to do all that. Uh, How did you get out of the truck? Well, it became very clear if I wanted to take the take the uh, take it to the next level, I had to put people in place. First thing was to get an office, and to spend money on marketing, and to hire somebody to answer the phones because, you know, you're out there in the field and your phone's ringing, right? Two things are happening: you got existing customers that are trying to get a hold of you for a, a question or possible work, but you're not answering it because you're out there digging holes. 
or you have a new customer that's coming in and you miss that call and everybody knows, you know, it, think of yourself as, as a consumer. If you're going through the through Google or through the yellow pages, as we used to say, and you and you call a landscaper and he doesn't answer, you just go to the next person and you, you might have to call six, seven people until somebody answers. And then that's who you're going with because you've built the relationship. So if you're out there digging the holes and you're answering the phones, you're, you're missing out on your existing customers, which is providing bad customer service to never grow because your people aren't happy because they can't get a hold of you and you're missing out on future clients. So, you know, step one for me was how do I get, <clears throat> how do I get an office? How do I make the phones ring? And how do I have somebody there at all times to answer the phone? And that was the first thing I did. And it was a huge risk. Okay. But in business, you have got to take risks. You take calculated risks, you take methodical risks, you take risks that are going to give you a, a fast, positive return on your money. And marketing money is always money well spent, but it doesn't go anywhere if nobody's on the other, other end of the phone answering the phones. And there's no systems and processes in place for the person that answers the phone to get them on the schedule for whomever needs to go out and, and do the estimate or, or the quote or the work. So those are kind of the first things that you need to figure out. And, you know, I, I tell people all the time, there's not been a whole lot of investments that I've made in my company that I could afford at the time, whether it's hiring somebody, whether it's getting another truck, whether it's, it's, uh, you know, more marketing spend or, um, an, an office, for instance, I could not afford any of that stuff. I took the risk, but those are things that pay for themselves. And you can't get to the next level without taking that risk and putting those things in place that give you that return. So at some point you just gotta, you gotta have faith, man. You were talking about, um, anxiety a minute or two ago. I don't have anxiety. And I, that might be hard to believe for some people, but I pray all the time. I pray all day and I'm very blessed. And I, I have a lot of faith that, that the moves that I'm gonna make are given to me through faith. And when you have faith in whatever you believe in, that eliminates anxiety because you know that you're being guided by something, a guiding light. Now that doesn't mean that I've not made mistakes, but I've not made a mistake that takes it all down. You know, it, it, it may be a mistake that I have to learn from and make an adjustment and it helps me still elevate to the next level just by learning that. So um, when it comes to, to getting to that next level, you've got to, you've got to have faith and you've got to take risks and they kind of come hand in hand. So um, I, I think the office and having somebody always answering the phone and then, advertising money to make that phone ring. Those are the first three big leaps of faith that, that you need to take. Man, I want to add real quick uh, before I ask you the next question. This is going amazing. So I used to have anxiety so bad. I remember Dr. Wayne Dyer said, there's no such thing as anxiety. There's just people having anxious thoughts. And the feeling of sitting on the fence and being afraid of the unknown and not knowing which way things are going to go and being scared and then <clears throat> anxiety produces in your body, it produces cortisol. Ooh, it's rough. But <clears throat> now uh, I think I have anxiety sometimes, but it's more so that same feeling is different now. It's like when the feeling comes up, it's, oh, you better make a decision. You That's better right. take action on this. You better decide whether you're going to do this thing or not. And if it's no, it's a hell no. And if it's yes, it better be a hell yes. You better get off the fence. You better be clear. Something ain't wrong. You better speak up and go. You better go interject right now. And you better go get in there and make sure like it's a, uh, it's this, it's, it's this thing telling it's, it's a guiding force now. <laughs> it's funny. So the next thing is, so once you've got the marketing, um, because okay, the reason I said that real quick is because if you have anxiety and you're spending the whole day having worried thoughts and you're sitting on the fence and indecision, you're making a decision, whether you like it or not, to do that all day. And you can go by for, you can go, you can piss away five years being that way. And you made the decision to do that. And you got to go look in the mirror and realize, or, you know, or you should go stand before God one day and say, hey, oh, when I was, I was scared. So it's like, uh, and somebody also said, 
you're going to get all the way to the end of your life terrified, never taking any risks or anything. And at the very end, you're going to go, oh, I made it. That's right. And you, you, have, like, you have nothing to show for it. So I, I got a piece of advice from one of my mentors. That, I'll say it again. You cut out. Yeah. One of my one of my biggest mentors kind of in the beginning of my, my career. Yeah. A, a great piece of advice. Make a decision and make it fast, because even if it's the wrong decision, you're smart enough to realize that it's the wrong decision very early on and course correct. You know, instead of sitting on the fence, just jump left, even if you don't know that that's right. And you'll know very early on that that's not the right side of the fence. Hop the fence and get back on the other side. Right. <coughs> so what do you do when that decision is you need to commit to somebody right now that you're going to deliver a result? And, and you're a little scared that you don't have all the information or the manpower, the stuff that, that you need. And that's my question. <laughs> so first of all, try not to ever overcommit, right? That's one of the lessons you learn early. Um, try to try to uh, under promise and over deliver, right? So, um, but in the event, the, how you learn that lesson is obviously by making the mistake. Um, but at that point, you have to trust yourself and you have to to look at your resources. What resources do you have? You know, you got industry partners, you got trade partners. There's people all over Facebook that can help you. Um, let's say you don't like you said, you don't have the manpower. Um, you can get on Facebook right now and go to Facebook Marketplace and you can find people that have access to labor. They have machines, they have trucks. Um, there's there's people always looking for work. So. You have to be resourceful. Uh, ooh, ooh, I just had I just had an epiphany. So a truck and a truck will be like, oh my god, I committed to dig this ditch. Uh, I'm scared. I'm just gonna go again, just dig my ass off till ten o'clock at night, three nights in a row to get it done. Yeah. So abundant Anthony will be like, I need a team. I need a team to dig this ditch because ain't no way I'm gonna be doing this for the next three nights till ten o'clock because then I will be useless every other area. Because so I need a team to dig that while I'm the visionary facilitator, huh? <laughs> Right. And so if you can get that guy, if you can get a team and you can have them start digging, you know what you can do. You can now free up your time to go knock on all the neighbor's doors and say, hey, do you have the same problem as Sally over there at 4392? Because I got a team over there. Look what we're doing. And for the low, low price of X, Y and Z, I can do it for you and solve your problem. So. so your job is so ooh, because that's uh, your job is to keep the calendar full or to be the visionary. You're going to be if you're if you're going to own a business or own a company, right? There's a difference. You can have a business and you're going to be out there doing the work, or you can create a company, an organization, right? And if you're the leader of the organization, um, obviously you're the general manager, you're pulling all the strings, but you, you also have to keep the calendar moving. You got to sell. So again, you sell a three day job and you can get, you may give up some money on that job by having the people, you know, having, having teammates come in and trade partners or whoever, laborers come in and do the work but now that you up to go sell more next thing you know you got half the neighborhood right and all you're doing is kind of just making relationships and keeping the guys busy it's it's symbiotic it's a team think of it like a baseball team you got your general manager and then you got your manager in the dugout and then you got your, your players right so you don't you don't ever want to ask your your pitch to hit clean up so everybody kind of knows their role and uh by by making those moves it all starts with that risk you got to take these calculated risks um, now, and then build off of it. Now, how do you make sure that, you know, these guys are properly jack jacking uh, the trail the trailers down properly. So the hitch properly sits on top of the ball. So they don't disconnected, don't get disconnected during tra uh, traveling and cause a 10 car pileup. And like, I'm talking about all the safety issues and the, the, the fears of people getting injured or doing stupid stuff. And, like all the stuff that's like the question marks, how do you um, make sure all that is under control, quality control, safety control? Sure. So, you know, kind of at the beginning, uh, it, it's hard to know what you don't know. So you're going to have your eyes on things. But what I was very lucky with is I was able to hire people that knew more than me. And that's what I'm always looking for, right? It doesn't matter what role it is. For instance, we just hired a, a, um, a new office manager and she is coming from a competitor competitor a large commercial 
landscape company right across the street from us. And she built out that branch. So the reason I was so attracted to her is because she built out a branch for a top 10 nationwide company. And she's going to come over and she's going to build out my branch. So what I mean by that is try to always find people that know more than you, right? When it comes to trailer hitches and stuff like that, if you know what you're doing, then obviously you're going to put your eyes on it and you're going to watch them do it. And you'll know very early on, this guy has no idea what he's doing. I cannot put him in charge. Yeah. <laughs> you can see how fast and how efficient he does everything. You know, you're in good hands. So, um, you know, eyes on everything, but you don't know what you don't know. So try to always hire people that have more experience than you. There, I have a, I have a saying, there's no substitute for experience. I can take a dude that went to college for five years and studied a subject, or I can take a dude that's been in that field for five years. I'll take the dude in the field all day because there's a lot of you don't see that you, you're not exposed to in the classroom. So there's no substitute for experience. And when you're hiring people, hire people that have that experience that can actually teach you things and say, hey, Jeremy, you know, there's a better way of doing this. And then, you know, you're in good hands. So, um, and, and to be honest with you, they're, they're, you're never going to have all your, your eyes on everything, right? So you got to build trust with people. Um, so they better have a lot of experience and they better be able to teach you things in order to earn your trust. So that's what I mean when I say I have a really good team. You know, we have about 100 people in, in the peak season. Uh, we cut down to about 60 in the off season. But I got all stars, man. Uh, now, I'm 14 years in the business. It, it wasn't always like that. But I got I got some really studly people um, and they all know more than me. And they help me build out each each uh, division of my company. So, you know, that, that's kind of it, man. Um, be careful on who you hire, but you'll know very early on. Does this guy know what he's doing or not? <laughs> you know, so, so you're not afraid to have difficult conversations. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think uh, we talk about hire, hire slow and fire fast. I think you said hire fast and fire fast. Either way, um, you know, if you're going to hire slow and fire fast, that allows you to, to really find somebody that, at least on paper, checks all the boxes and has all that. But you're going to know very early on. You know, you can have a guy that has a, a really stellar resume, but he can't, he can't, you know, hook up the trailer. And you're going to know real quick, like, sir, that, that's upside down. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work out. So you got to that real quick. So, you know, <clears throat> man, I, um, you just gave me a memory. I've been landscaping my whole life. I've worked at tons of companies and had my own business. And I learned a lot by working at huge, a huge landscaping company. The division assistant manager's job was to go around and make sure that every single crew in the morning before pulling off, he would just keep his eyes open on everything. And he and he taught me whenever there was, I was a foreman, and he taught me whenever there was new guys, like my job was to, Joe, punch in, start getting these tools from here. Sure. Bob, you go hook up the truck and trailer, do this. And then Bill, go open up the trailer and load up the machines and do this checklist. And then I would sit in and record the odometer and then, check you know do a, a pre-trip inspection around the vehicle make sure air during the time everything and i never trusted the guys that were new to make sure that they had hooked up the truck and trailer right and we're doing light check i told you man i got it mm -mm -mm. and i would go and i would look and something would be wrong and i and it was it was traumatizing to me because i i felt like i couldn't trust people and then i trusted a a guy in my own business to pull a truck and trailer <laughs> he could have he almost caused a five car pile up bro like gosh he basically he didn't clasp the coupler oh. and uh so he lifted up the dump trailer and it became dis detached and it just smashed into the back of the truck and i was like well i was glad it happened when he got to the job site but i was I was thinking about like how do you how do you multiply this and he was a guy that he was just having a really bad day and he wasn't thinking straight. And then I was, I was like, how do you multiply this across? How many crews do you have? So we have 11 maintenance crews and 10 install crews, but then we also have a construction division and that's all subcontract. So there's 21 crews. Yeah. Are all they all the same trucks and same trailers? We use all box trucks just for, just for that concern right there. Right. 
if I can eliminate one of those touch points, the, the trailer, one, I don't have to buy a separate piece of equipment. I don't need a separate tag. I don't need separate, you know, additional tires and all that stuff. And then there's the safety concern of exactly what you're talking about. Do the so, box trucks pull dump trailers around? How do you get rid of all the debris? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, we have box trucks, we have flatbed box trucks, you know, without a box, like a Suzu NPR. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all have trailer hitches and they can pull all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so, but the subcontractors all have the dump trailers, you know, so mm. their equipment. I don't have any dump trailers on my, on my crews. Uh, we have all box trucks and flatbeds. And these are for maintenance crews. Oh, maintenance and install. Yeah. But when you do install, how do you haul away all the old stuff? I have, I have all flatbeds. So when I say box trucks, I, they're, they're Suzu NPRs. We have all NPRs. The maintenance trucks obviously have all the boxes, but the install trucks have the flatbed with the dovetail. So, oh, right. So they're, they're open. Um, so where do all the tools go? Is there big, they have cages and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. like, everything else we have, I mean, we have everything delivered, you know, we have the flatbed so we can, we can go get a pallet of, of pavers if we come up short, but all our aggregate, all of our filter and everything is, is delivered on site for everybody. So, um, you know, they just show up with the dingo or the bobcat and they just start working. Okay. So how do you, how do you do quality control with the specs of each job to make sure that the that people aren't cutting corners? So we, I, I have five in-house designers. Uh, the designers do all that stuff. They, the designers, they sell the job and they manage the job. So they order all the materials. They communicate with all the clients, whether they're commercial or residential. We do a lot of residential design build. Uh, I don't do any residential maintenance, but a lot of just backyard renovations, schools, all that stuff. Uh, but my designers, they handle all that stuff. Um, so the same guy who does the selling does the designing and manages the job and okay. makes sure the crew is doing what they're supposed to do. And so they they will. So the crew all has a foreman, obviously, right? Um, and, and those foremen, they're, they're awesome. I mean, they all have iPhones, we do FaceTime, uh, but the designer, obviously they have quotes and other consultations they have to do maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're checking on their jobs. So they're there every other day for an hour or two, and then they go do other consultations and then they'll come check in. The foremen are okay with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've been doing this for, I don't know, seven, eight years. It works really well, but it also allows me to pay my guys a lot more. You know, my designer's getting paid to be a designer, a salesperson, and a project manager. And they can control their own flow. You know, if they're booked out for three months, they can say, hey, I don't want any appointments for the next two weeks. I'm going to focus on my jobs. And vice versa, if they're only booked out for two or three weeks, they can say, hey, Jeremy, you know, see if you can get me 10 consultations this week. And we can, because like I said earlier, I have an office, I have marketing spend and I have somebody answering the phone all day. So I can, I can turn those levers. I can turn up the marketing spend, the ad spend, and the phone will ring off the hook, even in November, December, January, uh, or I can slow it down if we're really booked out. Um, so, so my designers have the, the capacity to control their own schedule. And, and basically control their workflow and how much money they want to make and how hard they want to work. So um, that's how we do it. I require them to be on a job site at least three times a week. So that's every other day. And we explain that to our clients, but you got to understand we have really good foreman too, that can, you know, they, they take the drawings, everything's there. We, we spray everything out. We FaceTime every day. If we need to, I say, we, I don't, I don't do it much anymore, but, um, uh, my designers do it that way and, and again this is a process that we we just kind of worked through and, and built up as we grew to see how how we can grow and get the most out of, of of our time and still put out a quality product mm. all right so <clears throat> the phones are ringing there's people going to the contact form of the website the leads are coming in how many people are in the office uh, so like administrative staff. Yeah. Now I got my wife. Uh, she answers all the phones, does all the payroll. Um, we have an office manager coming, uh, March 12th is going to be her first day. It's a Tuesday, uh, maybe two weeks from now. And like I said, she built out a, a branch for one of my big competitors and she'll come and take everything. She'll, she'll supplement my wife. Um, 
but it, it'll be a, a two person team. And right now I'm, I'm in the office across the hall and I, you know, and the phones are ringing off the hook and she's busy over there. I'll take a phone call and, you know, book them and do all that stuff. So really there's only one, but, uh, there's about to be two and then I'm always, always the backup. So, uh, we have all our managers and all that stuff in the back, but as far as administration right now, just one. Okay. So the phone's ringing nonstop and then you're in, putting customer information and taking like in the contact form for uh, new customer requests and oh. they want to quote. So how do you qualify them to know if it's the right type of job that to, before you even go do an onsite yeah, estimate? Sure. So the first thing about us, we have a really good online presence. You know, I have 125 five-star reviews. Hi, you know, we do blogs on our website videos. So I have a high ranking. Uh, with that high ranking, I have a high rating. You know, I have like a 4.8 or something like that. Can't satisfy everybody, right? <clears throat> so I got 125 five-star reviews. So our phones are ringing. Plus I spend money. Um, what that does is that allows me to charge. I do not do free quotes. Um, I don't, I just don't do quotes. I, we can, we call them landscape design consultations. So when somebody calls, we, we ask them, what are you looking for? And, you know, they'll say, hey, you know, I, I need all the decking redone around my pool, so on and so forth. I need this, that, the third. And okay, what we do, this is kind of our, our script. What we offer are landscape design consultations. I'm going to send one of my five certified landscape designers out to your house. They're going to meet with you on site. And they're going to walk around and discuss the elements of your project. Uh, once you guys kind of dec decide what the scope of your project is, we prepare a sketch and get you a quote for the work and we can do all this for a hundred dollars and if you decide to hire us to go and execute this plan and this this job we will credit you the hundred dollars back and that's our, our it's a little bit more wordy than that but that's the the idea of what we say uh, and you get pushed back 10 percent of the time you know i'll get somebody that says you want to charge me to get my business no i don't want to charge you to get your business I just want to qualify my people because <clears throat> with our high ratings, our phone rings off the hook and I can't, I don't have the ability to send my guys all over town for people who aren't serious. Um, not to mention, not that I'm not going to do a small job, but it, it kind of, it, it, we don't have a minimum, but if you're going to charge for your quotes, that kind of qualifies that right then and there. But honestly, 90% of the people don't have a problem with it because they understand that they they're looking for expertise and they're not just looking for a quote. They're looking for a design consultation. That means mm. come out and tell them exactly which plants they need that are going to look good, but they're also going to survive in that environment. Which type of turf are they um, need for their backyard with the shade requirements, the sun requirements, you know, whatever the case may be. So, you know, my whole design team, they're all certified landscape designers. Their time's valuable, you know, and there's two reasons we came to this. One, when COVID happened and everybody was kind of spending money, you know, everybody was working from home and, and they had extra money laying around. They weren't spending money on gas, going to, to, to work or vacations or whatever. A lot of people put money back into their house. We had a huge boom. So we couldn't, we were booked out a week. So we had something and I said, you know what? I'm Shot. I'm gonna take a risk, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna just, I'm, the next person that calls, I'm gonna tell them it's a hundred bucks because I can't get to them for three weeks anyway. And they said, yes. And then the next person, a hundred bucks. And they said, yes. And then we haven't looked back since. Um, but, but again, it, it keeps you, it, it qualifies your lead. Secondly, they've already done the research when they've called me. I know the, the presence that I have online. I know our worth, you know, look at our reviews. And the people that call us, they've already done their research, especially if it's a hundred thousand dollar job. They're not just going to go through the yellow pages and start calling random people. They're going to look at reviews and they're going to read testimonials and they're going to vet people on their own before they call. So by the time they called me, they've already essentially chosen me. I'm already in the top three of who they want to call and they have no problem paying us because they know we're worth it. Guys, uh, listen, when you're listening to this right now, I want you to what jeremy is saying okay just listen to me very clearly if you want to be more successful 
and make more money. Stop thinking about the money and think about this. The demand is out there. These customers that Jeremy's talking about, like I, I like in my landscape business, my market, I don't know, they're seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses. That they're they're fifty four. They're Tom and Jan. They have master's degrees. They drive BMWs. They have vacation homes. They they have money to spend. If you display, if you're shrewd, it's having or displaying sharp power, uh, a, a sharp judgment. If you show up in a clean truck with a clipboard, you've got a measuring wheel. And in, in, in the way you answer the phone, your website shows that you have very sharp judgment and you take your business very serious. <clears throat> and you qualify the customers because you like everything you do and you have a stack of undeniable evidence on your website, your pictures, your videos, your everything, customer positive reviews that you are who you say you are and you back up what you do with you with with work. And, and, you, and you fix mistakes because that's why people are saying good things. You <clears throat> and you and and when you when and you when you're very qualifying, there's an entire criteria of customers out there that are gonna go boom. I want that guy. I don't want the the chuck in a truck's fine, but what I'm like, I don't want a guy with cut off jeans sh showing up in a dirty truck just flopping around like he doesn't care and he doesn't respect himself or his business. Take that guy now. Take a guy doesn't have to be brand new truck. I'm saying everything is clean and, and he is displaying that character, that integrity, that shrewdness, the cut like, like tra attracts like and water seeks his own level. So the customer who's the cheap nitpicky customer who's looking for the cheapest deal is going to go for the guy with the cutoff shorts because he knows that guy's going to charge less. The customer who's got the money who wants to spend top dollar is going to go with the person that they know because they've been around the block and they understand you get what you pay for. So Jeremy is basically saying, like, like he's living in abundance. He's talking in abundance. Everything he's saying is like, what do you mean? Of course. Like, because he knows. So what, the one thing here's, I'm just going to sum this up with this. Would you, what a lot of us don't understand that are stuck in scarcity is we're reaching out, almost bagging like a victim saying, please give me a hand up life. No, no, no. Once you fucking decide, you fucking decide that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's when you started tracking. That's What's right. Up? Track because you change the vibration that you have inside and you start vibrating on the right frequency that starts attracting the stuff that, that you want. It's it's manifestation. It's the power of positive thinking. It's the law of attraction. <laughs> and it all starts with your vibration. And when you when you know that you're worth something and you put it out there, now you can't just be full of shit. You can't sell bullshit. Uh, but when, when you start putting out a quality product and you start building that confidence and you start peacocking, right? You start bowing your chest out, you know what you're worth, right? If that stuff expands because now you're, you're starting to vibrate on the right frequency. And again, you start attracting what it is that you want. And then you start thinking about it and then you get more confidence and then you vibrate even, even harder on the right frequency and more stuff comes. It's, 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 it's a secret that's not a secret. I mean, there's ten, tens of thousands of books about it. It's been talked about it about for thousands of years. It, it's it's all the most successful people do it. And once you start kind of tapping into that, sky's the limit, man. Mm. Mm. I'm attracting some things into my life that I've always a dream, dreamed of. And when people call me or they're trying to, you know, pay me, Keith, Keith, I need you to, you're the guy for this thing, right? I go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't let let's I I don't care about money. I don't care about I want to talk about this and see if it's a good fit. Let's right. see. And they're like, so you can you can put yourself into a position. It's not a manipulation thing. It's because you basically would you like to have people begging to give you mo their money? No, no, you know, you're laughing because you can get to a point where people don't want to go with anybody else. They they want to write the check once and solve the problem right that's right and what you were talking about here about the guy with the cut off you know when it comes to to our industry um that guy in the cutoff he may he may be cheaper but there's going to be problems right there's always going to be a problem and what's going to happen what is your client going to do when they can't get a hold of that guy our price is higher but we guarantee everything and you can look at our, our testimonials and 
um, our, our reviews and everything, and it's a testament to the quality that we put out. Now, that's not to say that we're absolutely perfect and we're never going to make a mistake. We've messed things up. But the reason that my reputation is so high is because of what happens when we mess things up. I, do, I never turn a back, my back on a customer. And there's been times where, I'm just going to use random numbers, but there's been times where, let's say I had $10,000 in my bank account and I had to go fix a problem that was going to cost me $20,000. And again, faith, I just did it. I knew it was the right thing that I, to do and I had to do it. And I, I knew I would lose sleep if I didn't take care of this person. And I did it. And next thing you know, I got checks coming in left and right because I did the right thing. And that helps your, you, you vibrate on the right frequency. It's, it's part of that whole formula. You know, when you, what goes around comes around. And, and when, you, when you do the right thing and you treat your customers correctly, you, you, you just change the way that events happen and you, you attract beneficial things um <laughs> but that that chuck in a truck that that doesn't have sleeves and all that stuff he's not he's not going to come back when there's a problem so those customers that want that free estimate and they want to take that low ball bid they're going to end up regretting that but those aren't the customers that you want and once you know your worth you start stepping up to those higher end customers and they've already been bitten at some point in their life by that chuck in a truck. And they know the value of somebody that shows up with the wheel, with the uniform, with the, with the clipboard, with the nice truck, with the five-star reviews. Yeah, and they, they, they know the old adage, you get what you pay for, right? So they've already learned that lesson at some point in their life. And now they're ready to, to write that one check. Like you said, I want to write one check. And I want that peace of mind knowing that it's going to be done right. And if there's any problem, I can call Jeremy. He's going to take care of it. So it's a, it's a just a, it, it's, it's leveling up. For the guys listening right now, and this goes to me as well, that are saying, I'm listening to everything which, that you're saying, but you don't understand. My clients won't pay more. I, you guys are full of shit. I am still stuck in this scarcity thing. How do you become, let's just say, abundant Anthony when I'm stuck in a chuck in a chuck? I was so frustrated in my landscape business. You have no idea, bro. Like I, I used to lose my temper and pace around the front room in front of my wife, like like a schizophrenic, going money, money, money. It's all about money. <sighs> like I was just like because I wanted to figure out how to make money so bad, and I was being taken advantage of by customers, or I was just allowed. I, I was this repetitive scarcity victim cycle. I could not break it. It was impossible to me. And so here's what happened. When I finally started getting jobs that were, you know, five grand, seven grand, 10 grand, 12 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand. I've never got no million dollar jobs. That's amazing. But, uh, or even a hundred thousand dollar jobs. But when I started getting bigger jobs for, for me and for my business, I would notice that the same exact customer that we're doing, like, let's just say a little $1,500 trim some shrubs and put some mulch in or 3,500 to trim some trees and fix some stuff. They'd be spending $50,000. I, I would leave and come back next week, and there would be someone just doing finishing touches on a new $50,000 patio. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. This same exact customer that I'm scared to to charge them $1,500 just spent $50,000 on a patio? And I, and I was like, we do window cleaning, so we go in, in our, all of our customers' homes all the time. Where did that grand piano come from? Why <laughs> do they have a brand new BMW? Wait, we're, they're gone for a month? They're at their beach house in Florida. That's so right. it's like, I was like, wait a second. What's... And then we did a job for like 20 grand. And the customer at the same exact time was spending 125 grand turning their entire backyard into a luxury oasis. And those people got in our way. We were doing the smaller job. We had to leave and come back because it was getting dirt all over our work. And I was like, wait a second. What's, what's going on? So, so I started getting all this evidence over and over and over that the problem was with me you were scared scared yeah. and so the chuck in the truck might not 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 have integrity he might be charging so little and he doesn't come back because he's literally broken scared with right. his fingers crossed it doesn't mean he's a bad guy so when the customer feels that you're gonna do it no matter what you're going to get this thing fixed and they see that it's a higher price they're like i only want to write the check once dude and get it done right the first time 
Right. And then, then you just build on that and you, you get more, now you've built a portfolio of, you know, a $10,000 job, a $20,000 job, and then that leads to bigger jobs, right? Because what's the difference between a $10,000 job and a $20,000 job? And nothing. It's just two ten thousand dollars. You just did two ten two ten thousand dollars jobs at the same property. Yeah, there's really no difference. So, uh, you know, I read a book. I'm sure you're familiar with Grant Cardone. You know, he's one of the people that I listen to and read his books. He has a book. Well, I've read most of them, but I think it's be obsessed or be average. But there's a chapter in there. He's always talking about take massive action. What is your massive action that you're going to take? You know, his, his he likes the ten x thing. You know, if you're going to do something, if, if you want to accomplish a goal, set your goal 10 times higher and whatever action you were going to take to accomplish that goal, do 10 times more than that. And you're going to hit it, take massive action. And there's a chapter, I think it's chapter six. I can't remember the actual name of the chapter, but when you listen to the audio book, he, he says, I was going to name this chapter. Don't be a little bitch. Right. But I, I didn't want to offend anybody. So I named it whatever the hell it is. But he talks about that the whole time. And it, it's, it, it speaks to that example of, you know, don't be scared. You're sitting there and you're doing $3,500 worth of work for this guy because you're too scared to, and you're not confident enough to, to ask for, for the work for the bigger project. But all they did was hire somebody in to come right behind you and do it when you could have done it. So don't be scared, right? And take that faith and have confidence in yourself. And back to what we were talking about at the beginning, Maybe you you promise them something and you're like, holy shit, I just I got the approval and I don't know how to do it. Be resourceful. Back to what we were saying 40 minutes ago. Get on. Use your tools. Use your resources. Talk to your friends. Use Facebook. Find some people that can come in and help you and and knock that thing out. And now you have a, a product that you can show to the neighbor and say, hey, look what we did for this lady. We just built her an outdoor kitchen and a patio and a fireplace with the help of all my friends and we can do it for you. And then you get another job and you have them do it and you back up and you just start knocking on doors and you keep them busy. And then you say, Hey, how about you guys be my crew? And we can, we can bang this thing out together. And now you've had, you've got specialists back to what I was saying earlier about the baseball team. You got your starting pitcher, you got your closing pitcher, you got your, your four hole hitter, you know, you got your lead off hitter. They're all specialists at something different. You put your team together and that's kind of how it starts by taking that first step of that leap of faith that, yeah, I can do it. Even if you can't, you'll figure it out because you're being told to do it. You know, you're, you're being drawn by something. That's how I, I feel. But there has to be enough meat on the bone. And some of these projects are how you quote them. Like, I don't see that happening with the little tiny $250, you know, trim a couple bushes and be out of there. <laughs> Um, what's your average ticket job? So on the residential design build, it's about 65 grand. So we also build pools, right? Pools start at 62. Um, your smallest little pool is going to be about 62, but the one that kind of sets us apart from, from everybody in Atlanta is we also do the full landscape. So a lot of these pool companies, uh, they leave you with a pool and a whole bunch of mud, and then you have to call in a landscape company to um kind of finish the project where we we do the whole thing so that in itself kind of drives your average ticket price through the roof because when you have a pool and a full landscape you're looking at 150,000 to 350,000 uh so when you really run the numbers we're about 65k on the residential side on the commercial side we're about 120 um those are just big big ticket things you know we do a lot of work for apartment complexes so a lot of big retaining walls and we might go into an apartment complex, rip and replace every single plant and tree, you know, put in all like 30, 40 zones of irrigation, mulch, a pet park, artificial turf. So those tickets are are even higher. The margins are a little bit smaller. It's a little more competitive, but the, the, the tickets are higher. So, yeah, on the residential side, about 65 grand. Bro, so I got to admit something right now. I've done, we do mostly residential and I've done a few commercial projects and I turn them down because <clears throat> these uh, HOAs start asking stuff like that. Will you trim every tree in our complex? Will you rip out, go and rip out everything that's dead and replace it with something that's alive, <laughs> right? And I start thinking about making sure 
all the zones are irrigated properly, making sure things are planted properly, properly, and that I'm overseeing it, and then looking at the death rate of things not getting watered properly. In times that we have planted stuff, I find myself repeatedly driving past the properties for years, making sure that the stuff stays alive, staying laying in bed at night, hoping that the customer is honored. Uh, their watering instructions and they're not going to blame me anything that has my name on it that i'm attached to i feel like my integrity is out of the out of, on the line and things that i can't control like okay. things getting watered then having to tell the customer no you know i don't have any there's no proof that that you watered or didn't now it's dead and then and the warranty aspect of it it just gives me quote unquote anxiety so how do you do that at a large scale and be able to just be so calm and and you know yeah. So first of all, I, everything with me comes down. Less, I I have a lot of faith, so that helps me manage anxiety because I know no matter how bad things seem, I've been in some low places before it, with my business. You know where you think you're this close to bankruptcy. You know your payroll checks are bouncing. You know you got bills piling up, but no matter how bad it has ever gotten, I've always made it through. And I pray and I, I say, I, I'm thankful for everything that I have and abundant. It, it helps your vibration. It helps you, you vibrate on the right frequency. It's part of it. Um, but to answer your question, that comes down to charging correctly. You know, if you're talking about plants, you know, if you're charging three or four times the cost of the plant, that affords you a lot of margin to, to install it and replace every single plant on site if they all die. Okay. Now, not everybody can charge three and four times the plant cost, but if you if you have a good supplier and you can negotiate with your suppliers and you can get that Encore Azalea down from 25 bucks to 17 bucks, you know, multiplied by 150 um, Azaleas on a project, that's a lot of margin that you just put in there. And if your installers are doing things correctly, you can expect 10% of your plants to die so if you can triple the cost of the plant, you know, and you still lose 10% of them, you still have plenty of money to go back and do the right thing. What we were talking about earlier, Jeremy's always going to come back and take care of you. But Jeremy also charges what he's worth and he covers his costs so that if, if anything does happen, he has money in the bank to go back and make it right. Now, our guy, we have specialists, okay? The irrigation guys are going to come in and they're going to make sure that everything works correctly. They're going to do a full run through every zone and they're going to fix everything that needs to be done. So I don't have to worry about coverage, right? Everything's going to be set automatically. So as long as nobody goes in there and changes the settings in the program, all these plants that I put in are, are going to get the water. And also, I don't know how it is where you live, but in Georgia, we get plenty of rain. So rain is much better than irrigation. It's got nitrogen and, and iron and all sorts of nutrients in it. So we get plenty of rain even in the summertime we, we have lots of storms so um plants aren't aren't that big of a deal um but anyway the idea is to, to like i said with the baseball team to, to have everybody that knows what they're doing a specialist in in every sector so our irrigation team is going to come in and make sure everything's optimized and then our planting crew is going to come in and they know how to plant everything they know that the azalea has got to be up an inch or two above ground. They're not going to bury them down to where they get root right, root rot. They're professionals. So we don't lose very much. Um, and, and beyond that, you know, our horticulturists, uh, our designers, they know when, when there's chemical damage, they know when there's dog urine damage, you know? So if, if I get called out to a project after four months that we put in a bunch of plants, they can sit there and they can say, well, that's been peed on. You know, these boxwoods don't do well with, with dog urine. This is clearly dog urine or <clears throat> somebody has come and sprayed this. We don't have the maintenance contract on this property and somebody has come and sprayed a chemical on this and this is chemical damage. So um, we can cover ourselves on that end because we're professionals and we know what to look for and we can prove it. You know, we don't just come and, and say, hey, this is dog urine. We can literally prove it to them. Um, and, and again, it goes back to charging what you're worth, right? You can't just charge enough for the plant, the labor, and a little bit of profit. You also have to cover some, some warranty, especially when it comes to plants and hardscapes, right? Patios sink all the time. So you gotta, you gotta have enough money in there to, 
to go back and do the right thing if something should happen. Um, and that all comes with experience and then obviously your reputation. When you have a good reputation <clears throat> and you can qualify your customers and you charge for quotes, you have money built in. You know, you'll be able to charge charge more for your jobs, which allows you to do the right thing when that time comes. But, um, you know, that doesn't happen to us all that often. We've kind of graduated from that, but that's not to say that it doesn't happen. We do. We do make mistakes, um, but we're there to fix it. You hit mute again. There's something about being a business coaching there's these little hangups that can stop people like small hinges swing big doors. Or if you take a train, a locomotive train and on the tracks, you put one little one by one by one steel cube. It's a cube of steel on the track in front of the train tr wheel. It can never take off and go. But if you just remove it, the thing can take off and go full speed where I think of it like a door. And the only thing holding it is a toothpick and you remove the toothpick and the thing it's, it lets the domino go that knocks. It's the one domino that knocks over all the other dominoes. So I could tell you that we've done 10,000 successful landscaping jobs and we have 250 positive five-star reviews across our play. But I'm interested in the little hangups that stop people from being successful. And um, we, uh, we've, I planted, I think I counted once, it was 5,300 flowers and, and plants that I planted in one single week before non-stop um and um i've planted all types of stuff successfully so this one lady this really nice customer we planted a green giant or is a techni arborvitae yeah yeah so they wanted privacy proper planting techniques thing was browning out and thinning and it wouldn't grow so we came out on warranty, ripped it, out, ripped it out and replaced it. We put the Mike's transplant fertilizer. We amended the soil. We put compost. We we did everything and made sure water. I even went there on a couple weekends when it was crazy hot and myself and watered it with five gallon buckets to keep it soaked. Two years goes by or a year and a half goes by. The customers are still unhappy because the thing is just not growing. It's just one little tiny job. It was part of a bigger job, but I'm like losing sleep over this. My stomach is turning. My integrity's on the line. I don't know what to do. And it was so stressful to me that these customers were not happy. And I was still doing my due diligence, trying to explain to them and help them that the next time they hired us for another project, I came out and I just told them, I, I, I this is unprofessional. But I was like, I've lost so much sleep over this and I care so much and I don't know what to do. And I feel horrible that I don't ever want to plant anything for anybody ever again, ever, because I literally don't know what to do. And I feel horrible. I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. But the amount of stress was so bad that I couldn't fix that, that it felt like it could literally fucking cause me cancer and put me in my grave, bro. That's, no. That's how much I care about my customers. And I say, how do you multiply that across thousands of customers and being planting shit all over the place? I could see if I was like so removed and I charge so much and I just had sales guys and employees to say, oh, Mrs. Jones, I heard through the wire her thing. Of course, send the install crew to go out and fix that Wednesday. Let her know. Oh, yeah. it, it fucked up again. OK, fix it again. I don't even it's not like I don't care. It's just that some like you don't you let it. You, you have to get to a point where you don't let, let it affect you. That example that you're talking about, about the arborvitae. Yeah. Is that the end of the world? Did you did you lose your company? Did you lose the client? Did you go bankrupt? Well, they just accepted the fact that where, where it was growing, it's not going to grow like their neighbors. They're right. hoping. And so, so the end result of that scenario right there was all okay. It was okay. And if you look back at a lot of the things where you had a ton of about, at the end, it's all okay. You, you made it, whatever the, the, the worst case scenario that you thought was going to be the result of whatever it is. So you put yourself through the stress of something that hasn't happened yet. And then you ended up putting yourself through the stress of something that never happened because you're capable and you can figure it out at the end. And it may take you two, three or four tries or, or whatever, but the end result is you're going to be okay. And when you have that mindset, that you're blessed and that that you're you're capable of solving problems 
it helps you to alleviate that anxiety as things come because now you 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 believe in yourself that no matter what happens man i'm gonna i'm gonna be okay i'm gonna fix it i know how to fix it but that does speak to your character <clears throat> that you have that integrity that's a good thing to have that's a good quality to have i'm cut from the same cloth i've just kind of learned I, and i'm not just i'm not saying that i have always been this way i i i i can sympathize with that experience that you're talking about early on I was the same way, but every single one of those scenarios that happened, I solved it somehow. And I thought, okay, this is going to be the one that takes me down. But somehow I figured it out by the grace of God or, or whatever you want to say. I figured it out and we kept on trucking and new opportunities and new doors opened as a result of doing the right thing and taking care of that customer. And most of the time I learned a lesson that I didn't have to repeat. So once you realize that you're capable and that it's all going to be okay in the end, you can start to sort of put yourself at ease and, and just learn and build. You know what the worst thing of all is, bro? Yeah. It's not the worst thing of all, but it's in your business when you take on a job that you don't even want to do. It's yeah. the end of the season. You're so burned out. You just need it to end. You're so burned out in personal life, business life, employees. You're at your wit's end. Everybody's at their wit's end. And then this one job comes along and you're like, and, and, and it's like, and in that job is an unforeseen thorn that when you find it, <laughs> That it just it it's it's gonna put you in an early grave, and now you're at this like you crossed you've already crossed the Rubicon, you're already in it, and that's you wake up with a bunch of gray hair on your head, bro. Right, but you'll learn. You'll learn. Oh. Something. You'll get through it. You cross the Rubicon, right? You're already. Yeah. Whatever. Take care of the client. Learn something from it. Maybe. You know, you'll you'll be tempted. <laughs> Bro, I've been I've been through shit in my business. I'll be walking around a property with the customer because I'm still doing all the sales. It could be a job. I don't know. Let's say it's eight grand, and I'm so double measuring everything, and I'm so on guard. I'm very nice and professional. I care about the customer. I'm I'm pleasing to be around, but I'm so double checking every. Wait, stop. Is there a gutter underneath there? Is there sprinkler lines? What's and I'll I'll take the gutter uh, the the vent cap off and I'll reach down in there right in front of the customer and pull out a bunch of muck and just throw it on the grass and they're like, well, thanks. I, yeah. And I'm like that one for you. <laughs> like and I'm looking up like if there if there's rocks in a garden bed, I'll start digging right in front of them and I want to see how deep they go to the point where. I'm, I'm trying to decide this whole thing, whether I even want this job, because I don't even care about the money, bro. And 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 so I've literally, at, at the end of a quote, the customers are like almost, uh, they really, really want me to do it. Because the whole time I got one foot out the door and I, <laughs> and my energy is like, I don't want this. I don't need it. I'm, I'm super, super qualifying it. It's almost weird. And I've literally said, after careful consideration, I'm going to go with my gut. And this is not the job for me. <laughs> and, and I, I've had customers go like, then why did we just yeah. spend all this time walking around the property? But to me, it's better to walk around the property for 40 minutes with the customer and decide it ain't the job for you and save yourself sure. than to, to get into something where you know, and, unless you, so, so then that's a spiritual thing. Like sometimes you, you need a spiritual ass whooping yeah. and you, so your higher self will make you get into stuff that you have to crawl through shit to get out of. So you learn. So that's what I was going to say. So when you're taking the 45 walk around and you're reaching in and you're pulling out this muck and you're digging through the rocks, why are you doing that? Because you've had an experience in the, in the past where you're like, I better measure this twice because I fucked up the last time. I better look in this pipe real quick. And regardless of whether you take the job or refuse the job is kind of irrelevant. It's the fact that you have all the relevant experience to check all this stuff and to come to a decision, right? Because you've learned. And that's what I'm talking about. You shouldn't have anxiety.
because you know that that you've gone through all the processes to, to make sure you know that that everything is on the up and up and that you've covered everything right so there's there there goes your anxiety right there you're a professional you're a stud right walk around like it so that's kind of it, it all ties together and then you start vibrating at a higher frequency and you start attracting beautiful thing mm. so now when you uh when you have people work for you because you've been through all that from the ground up and you've had to go back down the back up the back down the back up then up a little high, then back down in the mud then back up the back. like you now your very calibration of your authority and how you communicate you just know to put the right people in the right positions and and to hold the line and to hold them accountability right. hold them accountable you like and they can feel it even if they don't articulate it they know not to not to bullshit Jeremy Tallboy. Right, that's right. Hopefully. Right. But that, that also goes back to what we were talking about earlier about being on the fence. You were talking about hiring people and putting in people into place, you know, and, and having them accountable, holding them accountable. You got to make those decisions and you got to get off the fence and you got to say, hey, I got to put this guy in this position and watch them and let them build that trust. And you'll know very quick if they need to go, if they're in the right spot or not. Again, back to the whole baseball analogy of being a manager, right? You got to put the right people in the right places. So uh, you got to make those decisions quick. And and you know if you got to get rid of them, you got to get rid of them. But um, yeah, when you're when you're kind of sitting at the top and and pulling all those strings, you can keep your eyes on everybody and make those decisions. But you got to make them. You got to make them. You got to have faith and you got to take calculated risks and uh, kind of just see what happens and make adjustments. Man, we call it course correcting. Right. But the boat's never going to get to its destination if it's just sitting in the harbor. It'll get to its destination faster if it starts going the wrong direction, course corrects and gets to the final destination. than it will if it's just sitting there wondering which way to go. Right. Makes sense. Ooh. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, I want to be respectful of your time. Sure. We're, we passed an hour and uh, a couple of things I want to say on my end. I'm doing my level up your landscape Level Up Landscape Business Workshop, again, March 20th and 21st. It's a two-day free live event where I'll be teaching you. Um, well, actually, I have it printed out right here. The Level Up Your Landscape Business Workshop. Go to keithkelfus.com slash two-day register. Two is just a number two. It's one word, keithkelfus.com slash two-day register. Or just go to keithkelfus.com. I'm going to tell my um, web person to just put it up there the level up workshop you're going to learn uh the service area research checklist so you can define your service area so you're not driving 20 miles out to do stupid stuff that doesn't make you any money you're going to learn how to choose your service suite and it's basically define your suite of services so you can become a master of a few things instead of a jack of all trades that way you been <laughs> i'll tell you about it in the workshop then you're going to get the landscapers property opportunity checklist. You're going to get this entire workbook that'll teach you how to identify, you know, problems and turn them into opportunities, which also serves your customers and makes you more money and helps you increase your average ticket price. If you're stuck making two, three, four, five hundred bucks per job, let's get that up to two, three, four, five thousand per job. I'm not even playing when I'm talking right now. And we're going to walk you through all this for free in a two-day workshop. Go to keithkelfus.com slash two-day register. Open up your browser. And I also have some, uh, well, it's a secret. I see you on March 20th and 21st. Jeremy Tallboy, thank you so much for being on my show. Any closing statements, anything you want to share? I've, it's been awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of uh, touched on all of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, just treat people right. Do the right thing. And you know inside of you what the right thing is. You touched on it earlier about integrity. If you have integrity, that's that's a great place to start. Um, after that, just just treat people right and and listen to your instincts. And uh, you know, I, the sky's the limit, man. How can people find you on social media? Yeah, so uh, NorthGeorgiaLandscape.com is our website, and then Georgian Landscape Design on Instagram will feature a lot of our uh, design build projects. Um, the North Georgia Landscape Management does a lot of the commercial maintenance, kind of boring stuff, right? Nothing really cool to follow, but the Georgian Landscape Design is my design and build install side. You know, we put up a lot of videos, and, and that's on Instagram. So Georgian Landscape Design. 
bro. We're kindred spirits. Thanks so much for being on my show, The Untrapped Podcast. And also awesome meeting you in person twice in Atlanta. Uh, Anybody listening right now, if you're listening on the podcast, Apple or Spotify, please leave the show a well-worded review. It helps boost the ranking so this show can touch more people's lives. And we just crossed 700,000 downloads. We also hit number 37 for a moment on the entrepreneur category on iTunes, which is pretty cool. And we'll see you next week. Peace.